What if I told you that for every inch of land on Earth, there are two inches of water? This means that 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. This important liquid defines our planet, and we just can't live without it. There's nothing as soothing as taking a dunk in water on a hot summer day, and nothing cools your inside as a cool drink of water after an exhausting afternoon. The truth is that life on Earth would come close to zero. But how did this precious liquid find its way to the Earth? Was there water on the Earth when it was formed? Well, scientists have some interesting theories that we will be exploring in this video. And to answer these questions, let us start by examining how planets were formed. Planetary formation starts with a protoplanetary disk, which is essentially a large disk composed of dust and gas. In the case of the planet Earth, this mass of dust and gas were swirling around our newly formed Sun until they started interacting with themselves to form bigger clumps. These clumps eventually came together to form the building blocks of rocky and giant planets like Earth. These building blocks that eventually formed the Earth and other similar planets are known as the planetesimals. Now, the Earth developed differently from the other similar planets. Why was this so? You see, in the early period when our solar system was still in its formative stage, the protoplanetary disk was much hotter in the place the Earth would eventually form. Although the protoplanetary disk had some molecules of water, something else made it difficult for water to form in the early. You see, the Earth was formed from a very hot zone that even if water found its way there, it's impossible for it to condense into liquid. The most likely thing that resulted from this is that all the water that could have formed together with the Earth was evaporated instead. From this, it's clearly unlikely that there was water when the Earth was formed. But there's more to it. You see, at this point, the Earth had no atmosphere that could hold water droplets back. So any water droplet on the Earth would easily be blown into space. Now that it's clear that the Earth could not have formed from the protoplanetary disk with the oceans and the seas intact, it leads us to the question, how did the water on the Earth get here? Remember the two theories I talked about in the beginning. Well, to answer this question, come with me as we go in depth into the two theories. What if I told you that the water on Earth was delivered by aliens? Well, it was not really delivered by green men from Mars, but the most common theory of how water got to the Earth is extraterrestrial. Although it wasn't delivered by Martians, it was delivered by another group of aliens that are regular visitors to the Earth, comets and asteroids. But how did this come about? Comets and asteroids are regular alien visitors to the Earth. These two extraterrestrial visitors are known to contain a huge amount of ice in them. In fact, models of the composition of these alien visitors show that they contain the same amount of ice that could have melted to produce enough water to form the oceans and the seas. But is that all? Just a collision of asteroids and comets gave the Earth its seas and oceans? No, there's more to this theory. You see, if the water on the Earth came from these two alien visitors, then it raises some other questions that begs for answers. For one, which of these two visitors delivered Earth's water? Was it a comet or an asteroid? For two, if these visitors delivered Earth's water in a single event or multiple events? And how long ago did this even happen? Hang in there as we answer each of these questions. First of, to determine the alien visitor that delivered Earth's water, let us examine the composition of each of them and compare them with the Earth. Vesta is one of the largest object in the Earth's asteroid belt with a heavily cratered surface. This means it has a violent past full of collisions making it the best object for this comparison. From close observation, the Vesta rock samples showed the same distribution of isotopes as seen on the Earth. While this shows that asteroids have similar composition to the Earth, it does not mean that Vesta delivered water to the Earth. An asteroid far older than the Vesta delivered water to the Earth, and it's not likely that this was done in one event, but in a series of events. 
This is the most common theory of how water got to the Earth, but there are others. Hang in there as we explore these other theories. It's possible that the water on the Earth came from its interior. The possibility of this source of water is known as the theory of outgassing from the Earth's interior. The Earth's interior is fortified with hydrogen and oxygen atoms, which are the two atoms required to produce water. The Earth's hydrogen and oxygen are stored up in minerals found on the Earth, and these minerals release them as the Earth cools to produce water molecules. Volcanic eruptions are also believed to be the greatest source of water molecules from the Earth's interior. How are these water molecules released during volcanic eruptions? As magma rises from the Earth's core to the surface, it cools down, and in the process it releases a load of dissolved gases from the Earth's core. Part of these gases released is water vapor. This water vapor either condenses to form clouds or is trapped in the atmosphere as water. It's very likely that outgassing was the dominant source of water in the early Earth. At this time, the Earth was very hot and the rocks that formed it contained a huge amount of oxygen and hydrogen atoms. And as the hot Earth cooled down, the molecules were released in the atmosphere where they combined to form water. While we believe that this might have been the dominant source of water on the Earth, the amount of water released by outgassing has reduced over time as the Earth has cooled. Currently, outgassing has dropped to a minor supply of new water to the Earth because it's limited to events that causes the Earth to heat up, like volcanic eruptions. The outgassing theory is not as likable as the alien theory, but it's backed by some solid evidence. And what is this evidence? First off, let's consider the Earth's mantle. You see, the mantle is a rocky layer between the surface and the Earth's core and it's rich in silicate. Now guess what it contains. The same hydrogen and oxygen atoms that are required to form water. The next evidence is found in volcanic rocks. We saw earlier that when magma from the interior of the Earth hits the surface, it releases a load of gases, one of which is water vapor. Now when this magma cools, it produces a volcanic rock. Guess what these rocks contain water? Volcanic rocks contain small amounts of water, which is believed to have been outgassed from the rock. To examine the last evidence, let us look at the oxygen composition of the Earth over time. The Earth's atmosphere is believed to have more oxygen over time. What does this mean? It means that more oxygen has been released to the atmosphere over time through outgassing. While the origin of the Earth suggests that the Earth had no water when it was formed, the two theories suggest that water either came from outside the Earth or the Earth generated its own water. In the end, it's not out of place to say that both theories contributed to the formation of water on the Earth.